looked at is the uh, is the skeletal motor loop through the basal ganglia, but that really deals with motor cortex and premotor cortex, supplementary motor area. Those the inputs from those areas into the basal ganglia, and the fact of the matter is that the entire cerebral mantle projects into the basal ganglia, much more so, even more so than is true of the cerebellum. So the, in, uh, um, with very few exceptions, the cerebral mantle is going to project, is going to uh, send its input into the basal ganglia. And just as the cerebellum has a cerebellar transform, the ba basal ganglia has a basal ganglia transform. And clearly the, that transform is to weigh various options and then to select one. So in, outside of actions, one can imagine that, for example, I look at, um, uh, I look at something and I either see I see either the silhouette or I see the, the, the form. It, it, um, think about two um, silhouetted faces that form a vase. You either see the vase or you see the two faces. You see the vase or the two faces. And you can switch between them, but you don't see them at the same time. So one way to think about this is that the basal ganglia chooses which perception you're going to see at one moment in time. Um, in a similar vein, it can, the basal ganglia may choose uh, what thought to have. You have lots of different thoughts, one thought. What emotion to have? Lots of different emotions at any one moment in time. You can rapidly switch between different emotions, but at one moment in time, you have one emotion. You have one goal. You have one motivation. You have one executive plan. So it's choosing with uh, different loops. It's choosing these different entities. The uh, the different loops that I'm talking about, they, besides having different functions, one may choose, say, the movement, uh, or one may uh, uh, operate on eye movements and the other on skeletal mo motor movements, uh, non-eye movements. Um, another may uh, operate on um, affect. Um, but in addition to having these different functions, they also use different parts of the striatum, either different parts of the caudate or the putamen. They have uh, an output that is uh, in a different region, either in the um, globus pallidus internal or is substantia nigra pars reticulata. Um, and they use uh, different uh, uh, regions of thalamus. And they, and they involve different parts of, um, of cerebral cortex. OK. so. Uh, what, what you see on this slide are, are just the five, um, five loops that people have talked about. These are the five uh, most commonly delineated loops. So the skeletal motor in the human, that involves the putamen, the globus pallidus internal, and, uh, and the substantia nigra pars articulata. It involves VAVL thalamus and motor cortex and prefrontal cortex. And it, what does it control? It controls actions. Ocular motor now involves the body of the caudate, the uh, substantia nigra pars reticulata, but not the globus pallidus internal. And it is connected via uh, a different, different regions in, um, in uh, thalamus and different subcortical regions, such as superior colliculus, different uh, cortical regions, such as frontal and parietal eye fields. And it, its function, as we said, is to control uh, gaze and, and orienting um, movements. Now, these other, uh, these other path loops, um, uh, their functions are to control things such as executive function, strategic planning, motivation, emotionality, et cetera. So here, how do we think about this? When the basal ganglia are working really well, all of the loops work in concert. And there's plenty of ways, uh, plenty of, of uh, connections that enable each of the loops to tell the other loops what they're doing. So there's projections, for example, from these th uh, between the thalamic uh, region involved to other cortical regions involved. Okay? So, so the loops are aware of what each one's doing. If you're doing something, you're all in, and people say you give it your, you know, you, they're operating on all heart. I hate that because, in fact, they're operating on all brain, but okay. 
Um, so if you're giving it your all, all of your loops have a common purpose, have a common end goal. Now, what's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is talking to your friend on the phone while you're typing email. Can your friend tell that you're completely distracted and not really talking to them? Well, of course they can. So that's, that's not what the basal ganglia was meant to do. <laughs> if, if you want to use your basal ganglia to its utmost, to its best uh, advantage, you want all of your loops, you want to perform with all basal ganglia loops. So you should be all looped in. That's the better way than all heart. Um, and so under normal circumstances, under, under the, 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 this system was built so that you, you find a motivation. There's a motivation, and that uh, motivation leads you to a goal. So you have a goal now. The motivation has led you to some goal. You want to achieve some goal. Then you figure out an, an implementation strategy. How are you going to get to that goal? And finally, you say, how is that going to be executed? What am I going to do with my muscles to get to that implementation strategy? And that is a way in which all the loops are working in concert. There are places, uh, there are several neuropsychiatric situations where the basal ganglia are not doing what they should. So for example, if there is if, if there's a loop that continues to play beyond its, its uh, utility, um, you may think that there's a loop that leads to a thought, and then that thought recurs, and the thought recurs, and the thought recurs. Um, that that, it, that is an, an, it could be described as an obsession. So in obsessive compulsive disorder, either obsessive thoughts or compulsive actions are rechosen over and over again. And this is another way in which the basal ganglia are thought to, to be very core, very important in these various neuropsychiatric diseases. Again, schizophrenia is an incomplete uh, ability, can be, can, can be construed as an incomplete choice of thoughts or perceptions. So you, you choose one perception, but the other perceptions are not, uh, are, are, are not uh, suppressed. So now you have multiple, you have multiple, multiple perceptions of a single moment in time, multiple thoughts. And finally, finally, I want to compare the basal ganglia to the cerebellum. These are the two big loops in the motor system. We have, we have our motor hierarchy, and we know that the motor hierarchy on its own is really not going to give you the movement that is recognizable, uh, the typical movement that we are capable of uh, and that we enjoy. Uh, and that these two loops are doing two very different things, but they're related, and there appear, does appear to be quite a bit of, uh, or, or at least the, the opportunity for um, interaction, for the, for the two to coordinate. Um, what the cerebellum is doing is so much more close to the sensory feedback and to the actual movement. So it's really making things smooth. Um, and it's treating more movement than action. Whereas basal ganglia is really treating the action piece of things, and it doesn't get any sensory information uh, anywhere close to, to the source. It only gets the sensory information as it was interpreted by the cerebral cortex. So the, the information that uh, feeds into the basal ganglia is already so biased by who you are and, and, and what your experiences have been. Um, and then you use that to choose on a much higher level, uh, not the movement, not the smooth movement, but the action. Am I going to smile in a genuine way or am I going to smile to show you that I don't really believe you or, or am I going to smile in, in a nervous way or am I going to smile in a haughty way? What is the, what is the meaning in which way will I engage with that, uh, that movement? And by linking the movement to the situation, um, I choose an action. I choose a meaning for that movement. OK, so uh, hopefully you understand that um, movement is a big deal to all of us and that it has this motor hierarchy and these two big modulatory loops, each of which plays a very important role. Um, 
And it's going to be a big part of any uh, clinical uh, life. Uh, obviously, we want to move the way we want to move. So we're going to leave that behind, as fun as that was, and we're going to move on to homeostasis. Mm -hmm.